Hey guys, I'm very happy to have you here today. It's a very big deal to have this meeting, our, our first day of the station address. Um, you can't imagine how much work has gone into this. Before we even get into the nitty gritty of our day, can I see a, a raise of hands who have been to our meetings before and been part of the station a little bit here or there? Great, great. And who's completely new to this crazy process? Okay, yay, we're so happy to have all of you here. Let's clap for the new people that are here. It's so great. It's a really big deal to have everybody and anybody in Long Beach that we can bring to kind of join our cause. Um, so my name is Andrea Toyas. I'm not anybody fancy at the radio station. I'm just a member. Um, I'd like to think of myself as a ship's counselor because this shit has been hard. And all I really do for our great team is I give them a shoulder to cry on, I give them booze when they need it, and I keep helping them keep fighting the great fight. Because for anybody who knows about local radio or who doesn't, this has been a really hard journey for us, so I really want to drive home to all of you. It's a big, huge success for all of us to be here today. Um, when we, yes, let's clap for that, because it's been like life altering, right, Melanie? It's been a journey. You know, when we first got the, the license and everything, we thought, cool, let's open a radio station. How hard can it be? Well, let me tell you, we learned the hard way. And it's a, so my point that I'm trying to make to you, it's a really big deal to be here today to kind of celebrate and kind of plant seeds for all the great work we're going to do ahead. So for those who have been with us before, we're very happy to have you here. For those who are new, we're really excited to have you here. And I would ask all of us here to kind of keep spreading the message for KLBP and what we're trying to do. Because we're really trying to make this amazing station for Long Beach so that we can all kind of have one approach, one voice, and one people to kind of celebrate how great Long Beach is. So I love you all, and for all of us and the leadership and so forth that are on KLBP, let's clap because I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So we've got a really great lineup for you today. Um, it's our very first, I think, our first day of the station address. Ashley, is that right? It's our very first kind of big address. We've got some really big news for you um, that the, the leadership is going to share with you. But we are going to kind of give you the coolest thing straight away, and that is we have an amazing guest speaker. When they told me who it was, I almost couldn't believe that he was here with us today. His name is Peter Frank. And you might not know his name, but you will after he talks, because this is somebody who not only knows about Low Power FM, but this is somebody who's fought the fight with the FCC. So I'm getting chills talking about it. So it's not just us that gets the low per the, the, the permit for Low Power FM. It's for uh, Low Power FM across the nation. Like still chills across the nation. He's fought to give people like us a voice in our local communities. And in dark times like this, it's more important than ever that we start at a grassroots level. And we're able to do this here today because of Peter Frank. So I'm going to read his bio. It's pretty meaty because he's pretty amazing. So um, bear with me. He's kind of a rock star. So the fact that we got him here today, I just want to tell you it's a very big deal. So bear with me. It's, he's pretty cool. All right. Peter Frank has always managed to integrate his varied intellectual interests with his passionate politics and his profession as a lawyer. While working at the Lawyers Guild Committee on Democratic Communications, the CDC, whose goal is to make US communication more accessible to all by individual and alternative media, Peter faced a live case, Peter faced a live case that came to transform the Free Radio Berkeley, an unlicensed one watt radio station broadcast initially from the studio of design engineer Stephen Dunifer and subsequently from a kit tucked into his backpack and towed up to the Berkeley Hills. In the early 1990s, Dunifer was slapped by an FCC lawsuit filed in a San Francisco federal court. The FCC's lawsuit sought an injunction, but Dunifer, who his attorney contacted the CDC, and Peter, as chair, sprang into action. A 100-page brief supervised by Peter showed that the FCC licensing rules were unconstitutional and in violation of the First Amendment and international law. Peter argued the case on behalf of the CDC, he did not expect to win, but the judge, to everyone's astonishment, refused the injunction, sending it back to the FCC to reevaluate the rules in light of the constitutional and international law arguments raised by the CDC. The final victory was that the FCC contacted the CDC and in a gesture of defeat, invited CDC representatives to visit Washington and help the agency revise its regulations to allow low power community radio. Since then, Peter has been a powerful impetus in starting up two community media enterprises, the Community Media Center of Marin, now controlling more than three community-based channels in a modern studio, and the brand new LPFM Community Radio, also called KACR, in Alameda, which Peter shepherded. Technology has caught up with the ideas of the CDC, and all over the country, new LP 
Low power FM radio stations have appeared, and this is all due in large part to our wonderful guest, Peter Frank. So he's going to come up and say a few words. It's clap for Peter. Come on up, Peter. So excited to have you here today. And I think you don't have to stand here. You can kind of stand up here. Thank you, Lou. Well, that was uh, quite an introduction. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, may it sound too personal. There were hundreds and hundreds of people involved in this fight over a 20-year period. Uh, other lawyers, community activists, uh, people like you. I'm getting a louder? No, you good? Oh, okay. <laughs> Signal uh, from Monsieur. What low power radio really represents is a victory of the everyday people over, the, over Trump, over what Trump stands for. Yeah. And, uh, year, uh, years ago, the FCC would not accept an application for a license for uh, less than several uh, thousands of watts, 30, 40, 50,000 watts. You know about KPFK in this community, that's 100,000 watts. KPFA in the Berkeley area is 59,000 watts. They're very powerful because they were among the first state, uh, FM stations on the FM band. I'm not gonna get into all the controversies about Pacifica, which Monsoon <laughs> knows about and I know about, but I will say that one of the reasons they're in trouble is that they got too big. And what we really need is localism. Um, even before Dunifer, it really started with an unemployed black man um, by the name of Mabana Kentako, who was who sent, to who sent to Canada for a one watt transmitter in a box like this. He lived in a housing project in Springfield, Illinois, uh, and virtually the entire black population of Springfield was within that housing project. He stuck a microphone into one end of the box and an antenna into the other and threw it out the window and was broadcasting to the black community in this very conservative area where all the rest of the media was what you can imagine it is. He broadcast rap, news, and other music for two years and then some kids in the housing project got beat up by the housing project police and he put them on the air to uh, tell their story. Two days later there was a knock on his door, it was the local police and the Federal Communications Commission. You can't broadcast without a license. That's actually the first person who contacted the Lawyers Guild Committee on Democratic Communications. Um, and it was actually in his case that we developed a brief and then for a variety of reasons um, we actually filed it in court in the uh, Donifer case. And I could go on at length, length about that hearing. Uh, the FCC sent out one of their lawyers to the hearing in federal court in San Francisco. Uh, my friend Luke Hyken was one of the other people who was arguing the case. Both of them had brought their college-age sons to hear them argue this case. And everybody, everybody was astonished when Luke and I and some others won the case. Uh, Judge Claudia Wilkin, who was by then, at that time, a new uh, Clinton appointee, didn't completely rule in our favor, but agreed with us that uh, we had raised substantial constitutional free speech issues. The fundamental issue was that the FCC wouldn't even let you apply for a license for 100 watts, which is what you guys have, do, have done. Uh, so Donifer couldn't have applied for his one watt station. Uh, we ruled that the, I mean, we argued that that was unconstitutional and the judge, while not completely agreeing with us, said that we had raised important free speech issues to the FCC's astonishment. They refused to grant an injunction against our client for broadcasting and sent the case back to the FCC for consideration. And, recognized that we had raised substantial free speech uh, and interna international law issues. But in international law, the right to communicate is even stronger than the First Amendment in the United States. Uh, 
Donifer had, in the Bahamas, had started broadcasting with low power and with equipment that only cost a few hundred dollars because the technology had changed and you could put together a radio station for a few hundred dollars. People encouraged by the victory in the Mabana Dunfer case, people all over the country, that's why it's not an individual victory, people all over the country started broadcasting uh, without a license. You know, unlicensed broadcasting is how we like to talk about it. Pirate radio is how some people talked about it. Uh, let me go back one step. Dunfer, I don't want to call him a geek. I want to call him an early, an early adopter. <laughs> He was an engineer. He, he was one of the early people who knew how to get online and listen, get news on the internet. And he got online on the internet. And this was the time of the first uh, Gulf War and saw that hundreds of thousands of people were marching against the United States for uh, invading um, Iraq. And he saw that nothing like that was in the newspapers here and started broadcasting truth that was not being broadcast otherwise. Hundreds of other people around the country started doing the same thing for similar reasons. And at its peak, I would say that was in the late 90s, there was probably 900 or 1,000 unlicensed stations. My the Lawyers Guild, if you don't know, National Lawyers Guild, is left-wing progressive lawyers, our view and our purpose is to keep people like you in the streets, or in this case, on the air, to defend the progressives, basically. So we were helping lawyers all over the country defend their local unpowered, low-powered radio station uh, against the bastards of the FCC uh, and losing a lot of the cases. But the FCC was the enemy. One of the most astonishing moments in my not so young life is when I got a call from the assistant to the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, the, the assistant to the chairman of the FCC, Bill Kennard, then a Clinton appointee, saying, well, we want to talk to you about this low power radio thing. Basically, they had decided to change the regulations and allow LPFM. It was a classic case of civil disobedience. There were so many stations going on the air, unlicensed, all over the country. We're winning a few victories, slowing them down in a lot of cases. That it was a case if you can't beat them, join them. Uh, and the FCC decided that rather than try and crush this movement, they would regulate it. And they asked us to come, some of us, to come to Washington and talk about the regulations. They were going to make it a commercial service. They thought that it took $20,000, this is in 1999, to put a station on the air. I guarantee you, you guys haven't spent $20,000 in getting on the air. Maybe on lawyers, but that's not a story. <laughs> um, we convinced, we showed them a shopping list. We convinced them that you could put a station on the air for two, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, and that it should be a non-commercial service, no advertising. And we prevailed on that, and that's really, very important that it's a non-commercial service. Yeah. It does allow underwriting, which I hate, but that's a whole other discussion. The basic idea is to serve the local community. My friend Henry just told me that well, Long Beach is about 30 miles long. Uh, LPFM is really community radio in the best sense of the word. The signal from most LPFM stations goes out about three and a half miles, so you're talking about a seven mile diameter. And there's a move with the FCC now among LPFM advocates, and there's a whole community of LPFM advocates, uh, to make this, two, put the power up from 100 watts to 250 watts. Yeah. That raises some complicated questions. But the basic idea, is, and I don't know of any LPFM stations with paid staff, uh, it's all a volunteer operation, but it still costs some money. Uh, and the idea is to serve the local community and do it in a democratic way, whether, uh, however your board selected, involve the community in decision making. Uh, the other part of the victory you guys won 
is that when the FCC opened the filing window for LBFMs about four and a half years ago, there were about three frequencies in Los Angeles available and 31 applicants. Yeah. And a long, complicated process of bringing people together in some competition. I won't go into all, all the details, but congratulations to you guys for having prevailed in that along with some others and being about to get on the air. So congratulations for having gotten this far. You're part of a very strong national movement. I mean, we were, I'll make one side kind of, one of our lawyers was invited to speak to the National Association of Broadcasters, who was the enemy really, uh, their convention in Phoenix about eight years ago. They wanted to know what we were all about. We had some negotiating meetings with the head of the National Federation of Broadcasters. Um, we were able to convince the FCC to ignore the opposition of the National Association of Broadcasters and allow you guys to do what you're about to start doing. So, congratulations.